Okay, now. Now we can do this. <clears throat> so this is the test three review. What's gonna happen at the, uh, right now this is the 8 a.m. We will be doing the uh, June 19th, uh, 2015 test three uh, at the 4 p.m. Let's take a look at what we got. It will be the June 24th, 2016 test three. So if you want to come to two or you're perfectly welcome to watch uh, the three video or the two videos. Uh, one of the things that we've done a little bit differently uh, for today you may have noticed if you've already picked up copies of uh, all the, the tests, the test three pack has all the multiple choice um, filled in. And so we don't really have to take a look at it. I will make a few comments um, just to point a few things out and then we'll work on the problems. After the problems, We'll do anything, pretty much what you guys want to do, and then see what happens. Um, all right, usual format, let's just go over the basics. It's the same as all the other tests, 25 multiple choice, one appetizer, three problems. The three problems are 15 points each for a total of 45. The multiple choice, two points each for a total of 50. And the one appetizer is five points for a total of 100. Looking over the entire semester, test one, test two, test three, final, and homework, you're aware that the homework score is only 10%. That homework score is the first one that I curve. That's, that's the one that I'm just like, so fine, you missed a homework or two or you lost a homework or two, or you swore to me that you turned it in and it never showed up, fine. Shift everything up by like two problem sets and then we're good to go. Um, test one, 15%. That was kind of an introductory thing just to see if you guys, you've never taken a physics test before, so that's why it's worth the least. They steadily increase. Now test three is 25% which means that the multiple choice on test three is worth more than all the homework for the semester. Once again, test three's multiple choice is worth more than all the homework. So put this in perspective, don't get so wound up about the homework when the big guys are the tests. And then for the final, it's 30%. Uh, Time-wise, it's the same format. Um, location, here, in 134 Brevard. We've kind of given up on uh, having it in the JAC. We just can't get, we just can't get the overwhelming majority of the class to agree to take the test over there. So we're gonna have it here. Um, for the final, it may be at the JAC. Uh, we'll know more about it then. Uh, time, the 8 a.m. is uh, obviously 8 to 9.15. Now I'm preparing for a test that is one hour and you get a 15 minute buffer. Now there always are those freak show students who get done with their test at 30 minutes because they watch all the lectures and they do exactly what I say. Um, I'm perfectly happy with what's been happening with the turn-ins. At about 50 minutes they start trickling in and then it turns into a little stream at about the full hour. And uh, as always, there will be those people that I have to get a crowbar and pry the test out of their hands. 
But so far, the, the actual progression of the tests have been fine. Um, so let me just say for test difficulty, Um, test one, I kind of, I knew it was an introductory test, so I kind of, I won't say mailed it in, but I took the test from last fall and just re-stamped it and just shipped it and saw how you guys did it. Because it's really the same thing all over again. Uh, right now, the average, uh, no curve on either test. So right now, I have a large block of 25 to 35% of students with A's and A minuses. And so I understand that's what you love, but for me, I got to figure out, I really want to figure out the differences between the A's and the A minuses and the A minuses and the B pluses. So the problems... will be less trivial. So they're gonna require a little bit more knowledge. They're gonna be, finally, we get to present, and it's not necessarily me making an active attempt at, at uh, creating harder problems, it's just that it's the natural evolution of, we now have such a broad range of subjects to cover I could start piecing together things and, and seeing what happens. Um, so the hybrids will arrive. So let's look at uh, the four problems. Oop, not that. Oh, I wish we could do more. Uh, appetizer, no idea. What the appetizer most likely will be is kind of a filler. If I do, let's just talk about the other ones. One, not an Atwood's machine, but an Atwood string. something like this. And so you have all sorts of wild variables. You have the tension, you have the mass over here, you have various lengths, the Y, the X1, the X2, and stuff like that. Be able to work that problem backwards and forwards. Now the one thing that did happen on the, um, if you're a member of our little party on Friday, uh, we moved to Bondurant and then there was a class at the end of our session, the last do not do the last homework problem. It's the homework problem where the object at the end of this is dunked in water. So don't worry about that. Um, but something like this could show up. Now, in terms of that tension, all sorts of fun things can come out of that. Uh, frequency, harmonics, nodes, anti-nodes. It's a string. All sorts of stuff can come out of that. Fluids. This is where, like, the danger of... This is where the danger of test three comes from because fluids can go into so many different directions. Uh, Bernoulli's equation. Will you give us that? Yes, oh my goodness, yes. Um, one of the things that I, I was doing yesterday was um, the test from last year, the Bernoulli's equation was kind of written in a weird way and I was, spending it trying to polish it up a bit. Yes, Bernoulli's equation is in it. Um, Pascal principle. Uh, 
Oh, uh, what else? Uh, continuity. The equation of continuity. Uh, oh, buoyancy. <coughs> and this is one of the things where if it's not covered on the test, much like alpha equaling zero was not covered on test two, alpha equaling zero will be on the final. So if you look at something and one particular problem is on test three, it's gonna, the other parts are gonna be on the final because I, don't, I just don't wanna cover the same thing twice. Um, just as a tip, it was talked about yesterday. Uh, everybody did great on, well, mostly great on the uh, right hand rule. So that the appetizer will not be a right hand rule game on the final. Um, the no idea appetizer whatever's missing so if I feel that I didn't cover uh, something adequately enough in one of the problems and it's a it's a good enough appetizer then I'll just make it uh, tends to be oscillations simple and spring and we'll go over that on the uh, the tests uh, with sound probably the biggest thing with sound is uh, Doppler shift because I can go hybrid Doppler shift with either a string or a half pipe or a full pipe um, I'm just a sucker for the roulette wheel. <coughs> and really with the roulette wheel problem, take a look at uh, the tutorial from last Friday. Take a look at uh, last Thursday's lecture. The roulette wheel problem has been done multiple occasions. And it's just, the, it's regardless of what the topic is, it could be a motorcycle, it could be a roulette wheel ball. Either way, the math is, is the same. Um, and so I think that's pretty much about it. In terms of what to study, obviously, Test three relevant problem sets. I get this request a lot, or I get this question a lot. Where are the solution sets? The tutorials are the solution sets. <coughs> All you have to do is just plug in the numbers. If you and your buddy uh, plug in numbers and you get matching numbers, congratulations, that's it. Um, a lot of the homework has been returned. They're in the filing cabinet now. Um, so if you want them, they're in there. Uh, it is very nice that I'm not looking at them on a daily basis, but eventually, um, most likely, uh, when I turn in grades, I'm going to take everything but the final and throw them away because I Mean we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the paper and give it to a small family And they're gonna use it as firewood for the winter and keep them warm because it's like it is a Cubic meter of wood is the size of your homework now um, The review lectures the one from today and uh, the one from this morning and from the, the afternoon I'm kind of figuring things out the test is I wouldn't say it's written but the, the file is there stuff's going in it and um, but the big major problems have not been written and uh, and worked out 
I will say this, the pro I'm going to, where's, no, there's no wood there. The problems are gonna work out nice. I'm gonna try to get the numbers to work out nice. Um, which means that if you get something like, like with test two, the time was 20 times the square root of pi. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm trying to make the numbers work out right. So when you see something like that, that's a golden sign that the professor has the numbers working out right. Um, I keep joking, I probably won't do it, but I would love for the answer for problem one to be one, and then the answer for problem two to be two, and then the problem for answer three would be three, just as a joke. But then you guys are now aware of it, and so now I can do it. Or I could go three, two, one. Ooh, we could do that. Um, but um, I'm, I really take pride in, in, it's not like the old days. I'm starting to really take pride in making sure that the numbers work out right. Uh, that is why I still believe in the algebraic uh, way of solutions is to work, works this stuff out. Um, if you do have, um, People may swap it around. I know you guys have like Groupon or something. Um, the summer, I'm sorry, is that a joke? Yeah. Am I being funny or? I'm, he mistakenly said that. Yeah. Oh, what is the one that, what is the, group me? That's it, okay. <laughs> So for group me, uh, you guys like pass around files and stuff. You can look at the, I would say that the current version of test three would start from the test three of last fall's final and then run through the spring and then the summer. So if you can find copies of that fall, uh, that would be nice. If I, if I, if I, stumble over a test three from last fall, I'll put it on, but, uh, but I think we have enough material. And then, then these two tests. If you look at those two tests and you can solve all of them backwards and forwards, you're fine. I am making small adjustments in the multiple choice just to update them. They're a little bit out of date, a little bit misunderstood. Um, we'll go over those in just a minute. But um, go over those old two tests and then go look through the lecture notes. Don't worry about the book. All the tests material will come from the lectures themselves. And it will definitely be stuff that I've talked about. Anybody who points at the test and goes, I never, I never covered that, I'm just going to laugh at him right in the middle of, of, uh, of the class, in addition to failing them. So, uh, yes, yeah, it'll be guaranteed, it would be locked in. So, um, let's go over, let's just look over this. This is the uh, row test, and I'm going to make some make some corrections and some <coughs> talk about it. Um, it's the standard contract template. Uh, all the equation, most of the equations are here. Um, couple things that we're going to include: uh, Doppler shift equations. I've already put in. Uh, I've put in some necessary uh, densities if you need them. Stuff like PV, NRT, and R. Uh, there was a time where there was a time where we actually made it to thermodynamics briefly. I mean, we just just touched it, um, and so we're we're 
we haven't done that, so we're not going to cover it. So stuff like that will be out. Um, if you see a row, it will be dealing with volume. If you see a lambda, it will mean linear. Though lambda could mean still wavelength, but I'm saying in terms of uh, density, I've been purging That's a horrible one. I've been purging row L's. Getting rid of that. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through the test again, and if you need anything, and then like always, if you if you see during a test, let's say a brain fart, and I don't include Bernoulli's equation on the equation sheet and you come up to me and go, where's Bernoulli's equation? I will put that up on the board. I am not a monster. So if there is a missing equation, I will put that up. Um, so multiple choice. So all the answers for all six versions, uh, basically a student came in and played a Jedi mind trick on me and said, you will do all of the multiple choice. And I said, I will do all the multiple choice. You will do all the multiple choice by lunchtime. And I said, I will do all the multiple choice by lunchtime. And I did it and put it up online. Um, so you need to find out who that person is and make your requests for the final. Um, who was it? I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. <laughs> so um, for number four, Four. Oh, that's the talk about lambda and rho L. If you see a rho L, that's the definition of lambda, but I'm trying to get busy cleaning that stuff out. Um, number seven, not on the test. Basically, when bubbles rise up, they increase in, uh, in uh, volume. That's not going to, that's, that's uh, thermo stuff, so that's not on it. No, seven. Um, Eleven, not on the test. Or, I'm sorry, ten is not on the test. I didn't answer nine. Why did I not answer nine? Because it's C. Uh, let's see. Now, number 14 brings up something interesting. This particular test... Um, did not, I just started thinking about a problem like this and it didn't make it onto the test. If you look at, I mean, we'll just cover it briefly and I'll do the, um, the June 16 tests have something that looks like that, just a series of waves and numbers. And what I'm going to do now is we'll kind of do like a brief test. Okay. Now the pictures will be drawn a little bit better on the uh, on the test, but which of these? Now what I've done is one is what harmonic first, two is second harmonic, three is third harmonic, four is fourth, and then fifth. So they're in order of their harmonics. So when I ask the question, how many nodes exist on a string? that is at its third harmonic, how many nodes does this thing have? Four. Because you always count the two at the ends and then the, any time it crosses the middle. 
So now it opens up, when I realized that this could be a type of problem, I immediately wrote like 10 of them. Um, <coughs> which one's the first overtone? How many what? Two. Two. Um, I have three anti nodes. Number three. Number three. Uh, I have I have one node. None of the above. Um The number of nodes will always be blank to the number of anti nodes. Well, there will always be one more node than anti nodes. Um, how many anti nodes in four? Four. Which overtone is four? Third overtone. Um, one is the first harmonic, but it's also the fundamental frequency. There were uh, quite a few people who were forgetting that. In the overtone system, it doesn't start off with first overtone, it starts off with fundamental frequency. Um, nodes move the most, true or false? False. What happens to nodes? They don't move at all. Adrian. Why is this the appetizer? Why isn't this the appetizer? Because it's easy. Right hand rule. This is a benevolent dictatorship. <laughs> Just that you do suggest, I, okay, it has a little feel. I, but a lot of it, I mean, it goes into the multiple choice so well. It, it is a, an excellent multiple choice, which means it's easily gradable. And if it's easily gradable, it'll be a multiple choice. So that's what you'll, what'll happen is you'll get a picture of those five things. And then within the multiple choice, when it says string three, you look for th uh, string three. I believe, I haven't decided where it's going to be, but it will be on the test. Probably in the equation section. That would be the most obvious place to put it. All right. Uh, let's see. You put your thumb, all right, let's see. put thumb, that is. Number 15, you have to have knowledge of what? In order to understand it. Number 15, you put your thumb over half of the opening of the garden hose, the water's velocity increases. What equation tells you this? The equation of continuity. Um, here's a list. There'll be like two or three of the um, Doppler shifting equations. Uh, 17, there was an error. It should have been Newtons per meter squared. Uh, for both... For both these... They will pro naturally produce units of newtons per meter squared. Um, one of the things that I've been looking at and I've been getting eh, frustrated, but at least it lets you look into my mind. I'm really getting tired of equations like this, the bob up and down, how many times, what's your frequency, what's your period, stuff like that. I'm probably gonna take that stuff out. Why? Because it's so easy. Yes, I know, you're crying. You should laminate those notes, otherwise they'd run. Sorry. So, um, 
21 not on the test. So constructive destructive interference will not be on the test. It's a simple idea, but it's just, I, I don't I know, there's not enough time. Um, let's see. Oh, on the, um, so you get more of this, gar or the Doppler shifting. Let's go, let's actually review this real quick. Uh, which two are moving sources? You said A and B? A and D. A and D. I really need to change these letters. The first one and the fourth one are moving sources. A moving source, the one plus or one minus is in the denominator. So either the first one or the fourth one is the source moving away. Which one is the source moving away? The first or the fourth? The first. That makes the fourth moving towards. Now, A, A and D, the first and the fourth, are both moving sources. That means B and C, the second and third, are moving what? Observers. observers. So if a moving observer is heading towards the source, should they hear a higher or lower frequency? Higher. higher. Which means which equation is the more appropriate one? B. Uh, in which direction is the observer moving if the equation used is C? <coughs> moving away. So if I was to ask, look at equation D, look at equation D, describe the motion. So D, why would it be towards? Yeah, because it's one minus. So that produces a smaller number in the denominator, which produces a bigger number in the numerator, which uh, causes a bigger number. And even now, I get that stuff turned around. The first thing I do is I find a set of those four equations and then just write down what they are. And then that, that makes it easier for me. So the appetizer, like I said, this was the year where we actually worked on just a dabble of, uh, of thermodynamics and pressure changes, ideal gas law, all that stuff. So the appetizer for this is not going to be on the test. It'll be something else. What? Oh. Hold on, let me keep that separate. <clears throat> yeah, I may have done, yeah, hold on. Let's take, let's just pull out um, the summer. You want tau page eight? Tau page three, number eight. Okay. All right, so we still sit. Your tire gauge reads two atmospheres. What is the total pressure of the tire? Gauge pressure and total pressure. Total pressure is gauge pressure plus one atmosphere. <clears throat> so that's just gauge pressure. The other thing that creeps in from time to time is you are 20 meters underwater. <clears throat> what is 
total pressure. It's three atmospheres. It's two from just the water, 10 meters per atmosphere, and then you add one for the atmosphere itself. And so that gives you three. And one of the things that I've been doing is going through the multiple choice and change, flicking numbers around so that it's the same idea, it's just that the numbers are a little bit different. <sighs> All right, what are we gonna do is we're gonna look through problems one, two, and three on the test. <coughs> All right. So you have a spring pendulum shown below. So the first thing I would do is stop and write period is 2 pi m over k. If you simply hung the mass from the spring and the spring is at rest, how far would it stretch from its rest position? Which means you're dealing with f equals kx, the magnitude of the Hooke's law. Now I said there were 12 oscillations in 20 seconds. So total time is number of oscillations times period. So total time divided by number of oscillations is period. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this algebraically and t over n is equal to 2 pi <coughs> m over k. And what's really interesting about this is that I did not give them mass. Uh-oh. Let's see if this matters. Hmm? You don't see any mass here? So if you don't see any mass, it may be I didn't give it to you because you didn't need it. Or I don't remember that I messed it up and give them a mass later. But let's figure this out. Um, Hooke's Law, why is it Hooke's Law, I like to keep it because I know that F is up and mg is down, and I like to keep the magnitudes and then use logic to determine direction. If I needed just, if I wanted to, uh, vector expressions of the Hooke's Law, I would use the vector expression. But uh, since I'm doing this, sum of the forces in y is equal to zero, f is up, positive f, mg down minus mg. And this brings up the whole idea that if I use Hooke's Law with the negative and I use g as negative 10, now I got negatives of negatives wandering around and I got to hope that they cancel out the right way. Or I just use logic. So mg is equal to f or mg is equal to kx. Oh, I need to scroll that up. All right, so now that I got enough information on it, what I'm really looking for is mg over k is equal to x. This stretch distance, x. Now I don't have m, oh, that's bad. And I do, I do have g, I'm on the planet Earth. Yay, we got some information. And I don't have spring constant. Uh, let's see what we can do. 
squaring t squared over n squared is 4 pi squared m over k. And I'm going to do a little bit of a weird trick. t squared over 4 pi squared n squared is m over k. The ratio of m over k is t squared over 4 pi squared n squared. So m over k, g is equal to x, or t squared over 4 pi squared n squared times g is equal to x. I just did a massive substitution. So not only was the spring constant not necessary, but the mass of the object not necessary. And so you could hear what phrase was used repeatedly during this test. The problem is a construct, correctly constructed problem. All they had to do was remember, and this is one of the things that I am working towards always. For the two 13s I only have, or for the exercise science, I only have you for about a couple more weeks. But for the two 14s, we've got another like four or five months. I'm going to pound this plug and chug mentality out of your mind. And this problem does it. Can you explain the MK substitution? What did you do there again? If M was five, I could just substitute it in. There's an MK here. There's an MK there. So what I did is I just substituted those two letters with these four. And it was just a straight, it was a straight up substitution. It's a non, most substitutions in high school are with one letter with one number or one letter with a couple other letters. This was an actual ratio that got yanked out and another set of numbers plugged in. If M over K is equal to this and you got an M over K in here, you just substitute. So this is 20 squared, 4 pi squared, n, 12 squared, 10, and x is who knows. Zero point seven oh meters. And so that is problem one. <coughs> Panic spread through the class. But there's nothing here that you've never seen before. You've got uh, Hooke's Law. You've got period of a uh, spring pendulum. You put them together. There's another, you could do the same thing with substitution and slowly bring them in together. But I just did one massive substitution rather than two small substitutions. You get the same answer. All right, next. Problem two, probably the most frequently used problem there is. Why? Because it's an Atwood string. There will always be Atwood strings. So I want the total mass of the entire string. So we got a vibrating string. F is NV over 2L, where L is the vibrating part, or L1. V is the square root of tension over lambda. So let's do some substitutions. F equals N over 2L1 
T over lambda. That's the first round of substitutions. Now, um, we can get tension Sum of the forces in Y is equal to T minus MHG equals zero. So the tension is hanging mass times gravity. Let's substitute that in. F is N over 2L1 mass hanging gravity over lambda. So I just substitute it out for tension. Now what I don't understand is lambda. Lambda is the mass of the string times the total length L1 plus L2. L1 is the plucked string. You pluck L1. If you plucked L2, it would just go bobbing back and forth. 1 over lambda, which is how it's used in here, is L1 plus L2 over MS. So F in over 2L1 MHG MS L1 plus L2. That's separate. Now the whole quest of this problem is find the mass of the string. Square both sides. F squared, N squared, 4L1 squared, mass that's hanging, G, L1 plus L2, mass of the string. Move that up that down. Mass of the string, N squared, M, H, G, L1 plus L2, uh, MS comes up, 4L1 squared, F squared comes down, and that's the equation. Now the frequency is 1200 hertz. It's at its first overtone, which means that N is equal to 2. So 2 squared, hanging mass, 650, G, 10, L1 plus L2, 3.2, 4, L1, 1.2 squared, frequency squared, 1,200 squared. Now, the thing that I'm going to start doing with these problems, and it's the advantage of doing it algebraically, you can see stuff cancel. 650 times 10 times 3.2 divided by 1.2 squared times 1,200 squared, close, hit, and I get 0 0.01 kilogram. In fact, if you looked at it, you could tell that I was trying to make it work out nice because it was 0 0.01003 kilograms. So I was really trying to work hard making this thing work out nice. Dr. Mm -hmm. um, so I know like, I saw this problem on most of these old tests, but yeah. then when you were saying, when you were uh, giving us the example of an applet string, uh, you went back to a static problem that incorporates a hanging mass for, uh, um, you know, where you showed us we're dealing with some trigonometric ratios. Yeah, um, so, that's... Um, I'm just wondering which one... Do we which one's going to be on the test? Yeah. <laughs> The, these are two different kinds of problems. In a way, 
It is the judgment of this court that I must apply the following rule. Atwood's machine will always be on the test. Therefore, the problem that will be on the test is this. Um, so my mentioning of this, it's this is kind of similar to this, but I'm not really going to... I'm not really going to push that argument. I can get around that. So if I, I will now declare that as have never been said and saying, uh, problem two. Which most likely means that, uh, and now I'm starting to remember how that, that problem right there, well, you can't see it now because I scribbled it out. Well, a fat lot it does right now. But a uh, problem like that would be on the final. What, what I just crossed out will be on the final. This guy right here is gonna be on the test three. So. And you all are complaining because I've just narrowed down the problems for you. Unappreciated. Huh? You didn't complain? The thing about this problem that's so fun is you got to get it down to this equation right here. And then it can fan out into anything. This thing vibrated at this harmonic. You're on the planet, you're on the planet Oxford. What's the gravity of the planet? So you'd have to be able to solve for G, the hanging mass, the length of the string, the length of the vibrating string, what harmonic is it at, uh, the mass of the string, all that stuff. And so that's, that's where it comes. So be able to get to this and be able to use all those substitutions wisely, and then you've got that problem nailed cold. All right, anything else about that problem? And what your question was very good, because I was totally forgetting about that. That's a, fi that's a finals problem. Yes. A final review session like this? Yeah, we're going to have uh, those tutorials. The Friday tutorial from 1 to 3 is um, in Dead Week is going to be a uh, final review session. And if those ki little kids show up, even the one in the, even the little, the little one, I'm kicking them out because my class is more important than they are. <laughs> Apparently, some, some elementary school decided to use our lecture hall to have lunch. And uh, I was understanding this time, but for finals, it gets real. And uh, I, don't, I don't tolerate that, so. All right, last problem. You have a sphere of rebellion at sh that as uh, oh ba 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 ba. You have a sphere of rebellion as shown. What is the volume of the sphere? So, density of water, one thousand kilograms per cubic meter. It's being held down by a um, string. The tension in the string, 1,200 newtons. Uh, density of rebellion, 400 kilograms per cubic meter. And as I recall, for this particular test, problems one and two were vicious. So problem three was me saying, I'm sorry. Here's, here's an easier one. Have fun with it. And though the problem was, people just assumed that it was another hard one and then they tripped over that as well. Um, the sum of the forces vertically is equal to zero. 
Uh, we need to know that, we need to know about all our forces. So there is a buoyant force up, which is the density of the fluid displaced times the volume of displaced. In this case, the volume displaced is the volume and gravity. Um, the rebellion does have mass. So mass of rebellion times gravity. So there are three forces going on. There is the buoyant force minus tension minus the mass of the rebellion times gravity. And uh, I think that's it. Now what I'm looking for is, well, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the volume of the whole thing. Um, density of water, volume, gravity, minus T. Now, I don't know the mass of rebellion, but I do have my Swiss Army knife of an equation. Density is mass over volume. When in doubt for a buoyancy problem, get that density equation just ready to go. Mass is density times volume. So this is density times volume, density of rebellion, volume, and gravity. Now I'm looking for volume only. T equals rho W V G minus rho R V G. Well, that's the mass of the rebellion. It's a it's a solid shell, or it's a solid uh, sphere. It's not a balloon. It's a uh, oh. This is a clarification of what the problem is. It's not filled. It's a sphere of rebellion. It's not a balloon with rebellion gas inside. It's a solid. Think of it like. Um, that material that they make uh, beer coolers out of, and you just got a big ball of it. It's not in a. It's not in a uh, balloon or anything. It's just it. Then you would have to include it. Yes. And there you go. The tension, 1,200. Gravity, 10. Water, 1,000. Rebellion, 400. Uh, 120 over 600. 120 over 600. Go calculator, girl, go. You're disappointing me. Ah, what? 0.2 meters cubed. 0.2 meters cubed. So obviously the numbers were working out properly. So for this, um, I would put this as a, like a heavy duty appetizer problem or a very light problem. A lot of it really comes down to. Um, when I write the test, I take a break, I come back, and I go, what jerk wrote this? It's obviously too long for an hour 15 minutes, and then I'll water it down or I'll buff it up, and uh, it'll, I'll change it. So I try to strive for an hour, but I'm really striving also for I want to different. There is a big bulk of students um, right at the at the 95 mark and I want to separate them out uh, divide them into two groups one will stay there one will drop a little bit because I want to figure out these people and don't worry the four people who have hundreds on both tests one and two I will grade them myself 
personally. It's part of the service. So for those four, we're, we're going to have some fun. I'm not going to hurt you much. So um, any other questions on this? What will the new numbers be? Like you said, number problem three might be the appetizer. Yeah. But then what will be problem three? I don't know. I'd have to make it up. I, it could be anything. Look, it, just look at the list of uh, problems at the, at the beginning of the review session.